CT, and you can think about your own mobile libraries as I read about these camels here. CT, the leader and load camel, seemed to grasp from the beginning that she held the balance of power. First, she forced a late start to the journey with her capricious shifts of weight that stunted the men's efforts to pack her with books. Mr. Abbasi, grumbling about the wasted time as they set off, thought he spotted victory in her eyes, though he quickly told himself he'd imagined it. Then, 90 minutes into the trip, Siti glanced back at him, blinked her long eyelashes, sighed loudly, and plopped to the lunar-like desert floor. She tossed her head jauntily, exhibiting the yellowed teeth that jutted from her lower jaw. At that moment, Mr. Abbasi knew for sure what no one else could. Siti was possessed by the spirit of his own departed mother. <laughs> when he looked closely, he even saw his mother's particular mulish expression reflected in the camel's stubborn gaze. A woman of aggressively colorful dress, his mother had been renowned for her strident refusal to be chained to household chores, as well as for her loud complaints that her husband, responsible for the happiness of three wives, failed to visit her as often as contractually required. She'd been, of course, three times the size of that husband. Her hugs had, more than once, nearly suffocated her slight only son. I am a woman who must be embraced in full, she used to proclaim to anyone who would listen. My expanses must be traversed like the land itself. A full embarrassment, that's what she was, but frighteningly powerful. He'd never been able to completely accept that a mosquito caused her death. She'd seemed too substantial to be threatened by a mabu, even one carrying young, young fever. So it wasn't a total surprise to find her reincarnated now.